If we say that we have fellowship with Him and yet walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as He Himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, His Son, cleanses us from all sin. Now, let's take this apart. If we say we have fellowship with Him, what does it mean to have fellowship with Him? My dear friend, in modern times, this book has been treated much differently than it was in ancient times. Many people will look at this and say, to have fellowship with Him, what He's talking about is the difference between two types of Christians. A Christian who walks in fellowship with God and a Christian who does not walk in fellowship with God. No, that's not what He's talking about. And a boatload of ancient theologians will back me up on that, as well as many of the greatest Bible teachers alive today. When he says, when he talks about fellowship, kononia, a fellowship, a unity, an intimate relationship, he is not talking about two different types of Christians, one that has fellowship and one that doesn't. He's talking about a lost man and a saved man. When he goes on and says, we know that we've come to know him, he's talking about a saved man. A saved man has fellowship with him. A saved man knows him. A person who abides in him is a person who knows him. A person who does not abide is a person who is lost. These are tests to determine not whether or not you're a good Christian or a bad one. These are tests to determine whether you are a Christian. So he says, verse 6, If we say that we have fellowship with him, if we say that we are Christians, that we're born again, that we're going to heaven, that we've been regenerated... If we say that, and yet walk in darkness. What does it mean to walk in darkness? Well, first look at the word walk. It comes from a Greek word, peripateo, which literally, the peri part on that, literally means, gives it the idea of walking around, or wandering, or going places. It's not just walking in a straight line, but just walking all over the place. So what he's saying is this. If we say we have fellowship, that we are Christians, and yet we walk around in the darkness. Now, this is a present tense verb. That means a continuous action. If we say we're Christians, and yet our lifestyle, our habit of living, is one of walking around in darkness, then we're a liar when we say we're a Christian. Now, what is darkness? We have to define that. It's the opposite of light. You say, oh, walking in unholiness. Yes, but I want you to get this a little bit deeper. What is light? God has told us who He is. God has told us what He desires. To walk in the light is to walk according to what God has told us about Himself and to walk according to what God has told us about His will. To walk in the darkness is to walk in a way that contradicts what the Bible teaches about the person of God and contradicts what the Bible teaches about the will of God. Do you understand? To walk in the darkness is to live a life, to have characteristics in your life and works in your life that totally contradict everything we know about the person of God. And it's to live a style of life that contradicts everything God has ever said about what He desires of you. That's the difference between walking in the light and walking in the darkness. And what we're talking about here is lifestyle. A word that is very, very important that Dr. MacArthur uses quite a bit is habitual. Habitual practices. The practice of your life, the style of your life. Now, let me show you the difference really quick so that we don't get confused. If you were to follow me around, especially when I'm on our farm, if you were to follow me around with a snapshot camera, okay, a camera that just takes snapshots, you know, the old-timey ones. If you were to follow me around, say I'm fixing a barn, and I don't know if any of you worked on barns with that old, old tin that they used to put on barns. Not that new flimsy stuff, but the real old stuff. And you're up there nailing. And I'm nailing, and you hear me, bam, 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 bam. And all of a sudden I go, bam, bam, bam. And you hear a scream like nothing you've ever heard before on this earth. I throw the hammer, I jump down off the roof, I kick the dog, and immediately you come up to me at that point and you go, click! And then you put it on the big screen next Sunday and you say, I told you that guy was a false prophet and he wasn't saved. Look at that face. 
Or you follow me around with a snapshot camera, even in my own home. And you see me give my wife a quick word. Charlo, can't you see I'm late? I don't have time to do this. Click. You know what? If you follow me around with a snapshot camera, you are going to be able to find times when I am acting in a way that contradicts what we know about God and contradicts what we know about God's will. Is that not true? And if you just take that snapshot camera, you can condemn my soul to hell. But if you follow me around 24 hours a day, 24-7, with a video camera, and take the full course of my life, are you going to see perfection? No. Are you going to see someone that imitates Christ in absolutely every aspect of his being and his daily life? No. But what are you going to see? You're not going to see a habitual practicing of darkness. You are going to see someone to whom light has come and who the darkness is passing away. You're going to see a style of life that although it is intermittent with sin, it is not habitual sin. There is a sense that light has come. There is a sense of as a style of life, although not perfect, as a style of life, this man is walking in a way that conforms to what God has told us about his person. And this man is walking in a way that conforms to what God has revealed about his will. Style of life. Now he says, if we say, do you know what your profession of faith in Jesus Christ is worth? Absolutely zero. Because all the time here, he's going to contradict if we say. He says, if we say and yet. If we say we know God, that we have fellowship with God, that we abide in Christ, that we're Christians, we're born again. If we use all this terminology and yet we live a style of life. That does not conform to the person and will of God. We lie. Look at that. Now, this is the apostle of love. That's what he was called. But look at the hard terminology he's losing. I mean, he doesn't debate. He just looks at you and says, no, you lie. He doesn't try to look inside your heart. He doesn't count your hallelujahs. He doesn't care about the tears streaming down your face in worship. What he says is, no, you lie when you say that. 